Hi everyone, Kevin here. Today, I wanna show you how you can both get and use DaVinci Resolve 17. This is the latest version. First off, what is DaVinci Resolve? It is a super powerful and versatile video editor. In fact, it's such a good video editor that many movie studios and also TV studios rely on it for their editing needs. Now, the great thing is it's a freemium product, meaning that you can get started with it entirely for free. In fact, the free version has more functionality than many paid video editors provide. Now, DaVinci Resolve is an extremely comprehensive piece of software, and so I'm gonna break it down for you today and show you step-by-step -step how you can use it. And because it is so comprehensive, we're not gonna cover everything. Instead, this video will focus on editing. First, we're gonna import and organize media, then we'll edit and trim video clips, and then we'll add some transitions, titles, and effects, and at the very end, we'll render it. I've included some sample video files if you wanna follow along. All right, let's jump on the PC. And first off, let's look at how we can get DaVinci Resolve. To get DaVinci Resolve 17, head to the following URL. I've included a link in the description, so you could just click on that. Once you land on this homepage, scroll down a little bit and you'll see a download now link. Let's click on that. This opens up a prompt with four different options. In the top left-hand corner, we have DaVinci Resolve 17 Beta. This is the free version of DaVinci Resolve, and this is the latest version that was just announced a few days ago. Over on the right hand side, you have the studio version and this is the premium version of DaVinci Resolve and it runs for $295. With the premium version, you get a few additional things. It has a few more effects. It has some 3D tools, but all in all, the free version is a great place to start and it'll give you most of what you need. Down below, you have DaVinci Resolve 16 and there's also the premium version of 16. This is the release version, so it's a little bit more stable. However, However, I always like being on the latest and greatest, so I'd recommend going with 17. Choose your operating system down below and click on it and run through the download and install process. Once you finish downloading and installing DaVinci Resolve 17, launch the app. This will launch the start page and up here we can kick off a new project. If you have any existing projects, you could also get back to them right here. Down in the bottom right hand corner, we can also create a new project. We could create folders to organize all of our projects or we could also open projects. Up in the top right hand corner, you have different tools that'll change how we visualize all of our projects. Today, we wanna start with a blank new project. So let's click on new project down below. Next, it'll ask me to title my project I'm going to call this the Kevin Cookie Company official commercial. Once again, if you want to follow along, I've included a link to files in the description. This drops us into a blank project and we can start creating an amazing commercial for the Kevin Cookie Company. Before we get started though, let's focus our attention on the bottom tabs. You have a number of tabs and like I said in the introduction, DaVinci Resolve is very comprehensive. Today, we are going to spend most of our time in the editing view down here. To get started with our project, we need to import some media. Media can include things like videos, audio, or photos. To import media, we are going to use the media pool over on the left-hand side. The media pool is where we can view and also organize all of our media. Up in the top left hand corner, you have a button for media pool. When you click on this, it hides the media pool. And when I click on it again, it'll show the media pool. To import media, we can simply right click and then there's the option to import media. Alternatively, and this is my preferred way of importing media, you could simply drag and drop the files from File Explorer. With File Explorer open, simply highlight all the files that you wanna bring in and then you can drag and drop it over into the media pool. When you drag it over, you'll get a prompt from DaVinci Resolve asking you if you wanna change the project frame rate. This is a really helpful prompt. DaVinci Resolve will look at your video clips and it'll adjust the project frame rate to match your clips. Let's click on change. This has now imported all of my video and audio files into DaVinci Resolve. One of the things that you'll notice though is it didn't maintain the folder structure. It simply placed all of the files directly in this master folder. If instead I wanted to maintain the folder structure instead of just dropping it all directly into the media pool, I'll go back to File Explorer and I can drag and drop all of the files into this column over here, and you'll see now that it maintains the folder structure. 
One of the great things about DaVinci Resolve is I have a lot of control over what the experience looks like. Right now, my media pool is taking up quite a bit of space along with the folder structure. If I wanna hide the folder structure on the left-hand side, I can click on this icon up in the top left-hand corner and that'll hide it. I could click on it again if I wanna show it again. Now, right now, my media pool is taking up quite a bit of the screen, but I don't actually have that many files. If I click on this icon in the top left-hand corner, that'll shrink the size of the media pool. I could expand it again, but once again, since I don't have that many files, I'll keep it in the smaller view so I have more space down below for my timeline. Along with being able to set the size of the media pool, I can also adjust how I visualize all of the files. With this slider over here, I can adjust how big or how small all of the thumbnails appear. I could also view it in a metadata view, I could go back to the thumbnail view, or I could view it in a list view. So whatever your preference is. Also, over on the right hand side, I could also decide how I want to sort this list. Right now I'm satisfied sorting it by clip name, but you do have control over how you sort it. If I want to organize my files, when I right click here, I can also add additional folders. So let's say I have certain clips that relate to the beginning or maybe the end, I can drop all of those files in that folder to help me organize my media. Now that we've imported all of our media, let's focus over on the right hand side where we have these two media players. The one on the left hand side, this is for viewing our source content. So here, for example, if I click on a clip, it'll start playing it in the source viewer. Over on the right hand side, this is a viewer for the timeline. Once we start organizing our content down on the timeline, we'll be able to preview it up here in this viewer. We can use the source viewer to start editing and trimming our our video. I want to go back to the media pool and I'll click on the first file here. I'll double click on it so it shows up within the source viewer. Here I'll move the playhead to the beginning and if I press the spacebar key that'll start playing it and then if I press spacebar again that'll pause it. I could also use the controls down here. I'm going to move the playhead to the beginning and maybe I'll go a little forward and I want to set the in point right here. Down in the bottom right hand corner of the source viewer here I could set the mark in point. When I click on this, this will define when this video clip starts. I can then go ahead and play it and when I want to mark the out point of this video clip, maybe right here, I can tap on this icon and that'll set the mark out point. Instead of clicking on these icons because it's a little bit of work to move your mouse down over here to click on them, instead we could also rely on shortcut keys. Say for instance, right here before I open the oven, I really want this clip to start here. I can press the I key, I for in. Then I could play it and here I reach into the oven and you notice I don't have any oven mitts on so my hands are probably burning and here I pull it out and maybe just a little before as I kind of pull it out right there I want that to be the out point and so I press the O key for out and that'll mark the end point. Now that I've finished defining what the in point is and the out point is, to bring it onto my timeline, I can simply click on the video clip and I could drag it right down onto my timeline. You'll notice that it automatically creates a new video track and a new audio track for me. Alternatively, I can also go up to the video file within the media pool and I could drag it down from there and that'll maintain the same in and out point that I defined in the source viewer. I now wanna show you some additional ways that you can get your different media files down onto your timeline. I'm going to double click on this clip where it shows a cookie falling into a glass of milk. As I hover over the clip, you'll see these two icons appear at the bottom of the clip. If I click on this, I can drag it down and this will only bring in the video file and not the audio. Alternatively, if I hover over again, I could only pull in the audio and not the video file. Down below on the toolbar, I have three additional options for getting media onto my timeline. I can insert at the current playhead, I can also overwrite, or I can replace. And there's no shortage of ways for getting your media onto the timeline. I can also take the clip and then drag it over to the far right hand side and I'll see a few additional options. Now these three options, these are also on the toolbar down below, but I have some additional ones I can fit to fill. I could place on top, append at the end, or ripple overwrite. For now, I wanna append this at the 
end. There's no shortage of ways of getting your media onto the timeline. We now have some media on the timeline. Let's shift our focus down to the timeline at the bottom. First, in the top left-hand corner of the timeline, we can adjust how we visualize the timeline. You could adjust the video height and you could also adjust the audio track height. Right above the timeline in the middle, we have all of our different editing tools. We've already looked at three of them for how you get more media onto your timeline and we'll go through one by one what all of these different icons do. You'll see that on the left hand side that one of them is highlighted in red. This indicates that it's the currently active tool. Here I could click on another one to make that the active tool. When I hover over the different icons, you'll see a tooltip appear with a shortcut key. So as you start using DaVinci Resolve more and more, you can rely on tooltips instead of having to click on each individual icon. Let's first focus our attention on the selection mode to see what we can do with this. With the selection mode active, I can click on a clip on my timeline and I can move it to a new position. So here I move the clip to the end. You'll notice that it leaves a gap here though. If I also press Press the control and shift key and then I move, this will do a ripple move where it fills in the gap. I'm going to press control Z to undo that. With the selection mode tool, I can also hover over the front or the end of the clip if I want to adjust the start point or if I want to adjust the end point. If I hover over between two clips, I have the roll tool and here I could adjust the ending of one clip and the beginning of the other clip. Along with being able to edit the clips and trim them, I could also click on one of my clips and I could drag it up, which will create a new video and audio track. Now that we've looked at the selection mode tool, let's shift our focus to the trim edit mode tool. I'll click on that to activate it and this tool does a lot. It can do trims, rolls, slips, and slides. And if you don't quite know what all of that means, don't worry, we're gonna step through each one. Once again, I'll go down to my timeline with this tool selected. And just like before, I can trim a clip by hovering over the edges and then I could drag it in to adjust the out points or here I could adjust the start point. One of the differences between this and the selection mode tool is it automatically fills in the gaps, while with the selection mode tool it left a gap there. Next, I can also do a roll edit just like with the selection tool. Here I can adjust the start point and the end point for adjacent clips. Next, we can also make a slip edit. What does this mean? Well, when I hover over the middle of the clip, you'll see the slip icon appear. When I click on the clip, I could maintain the clip's length, but adjust the start point and the end point. To help me with this, in the top right-hand corner, you'll see some preview images that show me when the clip will start and when the clip will end. Last, I wanna show you how you can make a slide edit. When I hover over the base of the clip, you see the slide icon appear. When I click on this, I can adjust the position of my clip. It'll maintain the length, but here I could adjust where it appears in relation to the adjacent clips. Next, let's look at how we can use the dynamic trim mode tool. And before we do that, I wanna show a few different ways you could both play and reverse your video in the timeline viewer. This will be helpful when we use the dynamic trim tool. First, with the timeline viewer in focus up here in the top right hand corner, you can press the L key to play and you can press the K key to pause or the J key to reverse. All of these keys sit together on the keyboard. You have J, K, and L. So once again, J to go backwards, K to pause, and L to go forwards. One of the neat tricks is if you press L twice or J twice, it'll increase the speed. So here if I press L twice, it'll go even faster. We're gonna use these keys when we use the dynamic trim mode. Here I have my playhead over the second clip on my timeline and I'm gonna select the dynamic trim mode. Right now I can press the L key and it'll increase the length of the first clip. Alternatively, I could press the J key and it'll reduce the length of the first clip. The last tool in this group is the blade edit mode. When I select this, it lives up to its name. I can go over one of the clips on my timeline and you'll see a blade appear. When I click, this'll slice the clip where I click. So this is yet one more way that you could edit your video clips. Now that we know the basics of trimming and editing clips on our timeline, let's bring in the rest of our clips from the media pool. I'm gonna go up to the top and I'll simply select clips two through 12 and I'll drag and drop them onto my timeline. I'm gonna overwrite clip number seven because I already have it in this set of clips. 
With all of the clips on the timeline now, I want to show you how you can use keyboard shortcuts to also edit and trim your video clips. Here, I'll select right in front and we see the milk glass filling up. I want to wait until it's right about at the midway point and I want to set this as the end point. I could use these four tools that we just walked through to set the end point or I'll use keyboard shortcut keys. Now, if I want this to be the end point, I could press the shift key together with the open bracket key and that will set the end point. Here you see that it leaves a gap in front and the reason why is I currently have the selection tool selected. I could undo that if instead I go with the trim edit mode and I press shift bracket, it'll close that gap. If I don't want to have to worry about toggling back and forth between these two tools and I want to remove the gap, I can press the control shift and open bracket key and that'll remove the gap as well. So just a few different ways you could use your keyboard to set the end point. Now here I'm going to play the clip for a little bit longer and it fills up just a little bit and I want this to be the out point. I can press the control shift and close bracket key and that'll set the end of the clip and it'll also apply a ripple edit so it won't leave any gaps in place. Now that we know all of the different tools and the shortcut keys, let's go through and make a few edits. I'll select the next clip and then hit the play icon and right when it's about halfway full, so right about here, I want this to be the end point. So once again, I'll press control shift open bracket and we'll play for just a moment and then that'll be the out point. So I'll press control shift and close bracket. I can now go through, I'll select my next video clip and right when the hand comes in to grab the cookie, we'll set that as the in point and I'll play for a moment once it disappears and then that'll be the out point. I can now go through and I'll edit all of my different clips just so they're a little bit shorter. Now that I've made a whole bunch of edits, let's see what other tools that we have on our toolbar. The next one here is the snapping tool. Here if I click on one of the clips on my timeline and I bring it to an adjacent clip, you'll notice that it snaps. If I turn this off, I no longer get that snapping. To the right of that, I have the linked selection tool. When link selection is turned on, let's say I click on this video clip, it'll tie together the audio and I could move both files together. If, however, I turn off linked selection, I could click on the video file and you'll notice that it does not pull the audio file along with it. The last tool in this group is the position lock. When I turn this on, it'll lock the position of all of the video clips on this track. So here I can no longer move these different items. To the right of this group, we have the flag and the marker tool. And this way you can put down reminders on your timeline or on clips. So maybe you remember to do something. Here, for example, I'll select this clip and next I'll click on the flag tool. Here you'll see that it inserts a flag on the clip. If I double click on the flag, I can leave a note. I could even adjust the color of the flag. Here I can click on the marker tool and this will insert a marker on my timeline. Here we see the marker icon and here too I could double click on it and I could leave a note. Here I could even click into a clip and then click on the marker tool and this will leave a marker within the clip. So these are just tools that you can use to help you remember to go back to a certain point maybe you needed to edit something, maybe you wanted to adjust something, this will help you remember where that was. Last, I want to show the last few icons that we have on the toolbar and these affect how we view our timeline and what our zoom level is. The first icon takes all of the clips and it fits it within the available space. Next, if I click on this next one, it'll zoom in and show me a detailed view and the last one jumps to a custom zoom level and I could adjust what that custom zoom level is. Now one very handy shortcut key that you could use is Shift Z. That'll toggle between showing all of your clips in the available view and going to the custom view and I could toggle back and forth between those two. Now that we've looked at how to change the zoom levels, the last thing I want to show you related to editing is how you can delete a clip if you no longer want it on your timeline. To delete a clip, simply select it and then you could right click on the clip and you could delete the selected or you could ripple delete. Remember, ripple delete removes the gap. This is a handy shortcut key to know. To simply delete the selected item and leave the gap, you could press backspace or you could ripple delete by clicking on delete. Let's try this out to see how it works. I'll click on the clip and here I'll hit backspace and there you see it leaves the gap. I'm going to undo that. Here if I press the 
delete key, it'll remove it, plus it fills in that gap. The video is starting to come together, and I think the Kevin Cookie Company will have a fantastic commercial. We need to make a few tweaks though. When I go to my second clip, you'll notice that it's a little dark and dim, especially when I compare it to this shot of the milk. I want to brighten this up a little bit. To brighten up a clip, I'll simply select it, and then we'll click on color on the bottom. Now I said we would spend most of our time in the editing view, but I do want to just show you how you could change the brightness within the color view. When we click on color, this drops us within the color view, and I see that my second clip is currently selected. Down below, I can adjust the color of this clip. Here, let me click over shadows, and I could adjust the shadows a little bit, so I'll make it a little bit lighter. Additionally, I'll click into highlights, and I can brighten this up as well. This is already looking a lot more vibrant and rich. I'll stick with this. This is just a very quick preview of how you could adjust the brightness of a clip. Next, let's click back into edit. The clip looks a lot more vibrant now, and it matches the next clip that appears in the timeline. That looks good. The next edit I want to make is right up here with clip number 7, where the cookie falls in the milk. Now it goes by a little quick, and I want to slow it down a little bit. To adjust the speed of a clip, let's right click on the clip, and within the menu that appears, let's click on change clip speed. Here a dialog appears, and I'll simply slide it over so maybe we're at about 75%. Next, because the clip will be longer because I slowed it down, I want to ripple the sequence so it moves everything out to fit the longer clip. Next, let's click on change. I now see the clip is slightly longer, and if I play it, we see that it goes a little bit slower. I like that. I think that looks good. The video is starting to take shape, but it wouldn't really be a commercial without music. I have some music up here in my media pool, and I want to pull it down onto my timeline. Here I'll select the music clip, and I'll drag it down. When I drag it down, you'll see that once again it adds a new audio track. I'll drop it right there, and now I have my audio. With the audio now in my timeline, you'll see that it doesn't start immediately. I want the music to kick in right at the beginning of my video. Also, if I go forward a little bit, you'll see that the drum doesn't kick in until a little bit later. I want my clip to start maybe right about here. Now I could use all of the same editing tools with audio that I used with my video tracks. Here I can press Control shift open bracket and that'll set the in point for my audio. The one thing you'll notice though is when I set the in point, it also adjusted the in point for my other tracks. I didn't want that so I'll undo it. If I want to make edits to, let's say, this track, but I don't want it to affect the other tracks, I can use the Auto Track Selector. When I go over to the track here, I can turn off the Auto Track Selector for Video 1 and Audio 1. When I do that, I'll go back down to my audio clip, and here I'll set the in point using Control shift open bracket Here now you'll see that the edit applies to my audio track, but it left my other two tracks alone. Next, I want to go to the end of my audio clip, and I want to set the out point. Here, I'll zoom in just a little bit more. Now, just like before, I can click on the audio track, and here I'll press Control shift and close bracket, and that'll set the out point. Let's hear how that sounds. You'll notice that right at the end of the video, the audio is still going at full power. I want that to fade out. When I hover over the clip, you'll see this icon appear at the very top. When I click on that, I could drag it over, and this will apply a fade to the audio. Let's hear how that sounds. There it fades out very nicely. Now that I'm done making edits to my audio track, over on the left hand side where I have all of my tracks, I can lock this track. This way I won't be able to make any additional edits. Especially if you have a complex project, you might want to lock something just so you don't mess with it and so it stays exactly how you have it. Just like we can set a fade out on the audio, we could also fade out on video. Here too, when I hover over a video track, I see the same icon here, and I can fade out that track. So now both the video will fade out and the audio will fade out. Let's take a look. Oh, that's looking good for the conclusion of the video. The music now sounds very good. When I go to the beginning of my timeline and hit play, 
You'll notice that there are some sound effects of the oven opening and then I pull the tray out. I'd like that to be a little bit louder so you really hear those sound effects. Now I could hover over the audio file and you'll see that there's a line here. When I click on that line, I could increase the volume or I can also decrease the volume. I'll increase it just a tiny bit so you hear it a little bit more. Let's see how that sounds. I think that sounds a lot better now. Let's say that I wanted to take that same volume adjustment and I wanna apply it to other clips. I can right click on this and I'll go to copy. I could also press control C. Let's say I wanna apply this sound effect here where I'm eating the cookie so you can really hear that. I can right click and then I could go to paste attributes. When I click on that, I could paste all sorts of different types of attributes. I could paste video attributes and also audio attributes. I'll select audio because I only want the audio attribute to take effect on this new clip. Next, I'll click on apply. You'll now see that the audio is slightly louder and let's play that to see what it sounds like. Oh, you could hear me biting on that cookie. That sounds good. As we've been going through this, we've been using lots of different shortcut keys. If you don't remember shortcut keys or you want a quick reminder of what they are, you can simply go to these top menus on top. So here, for instance, I'll click on edit and you can see all of the different editing tools and you can see the associated shortcut keys. Now let's say that maybe you don't like these shortcut keys or you'd rather have a different shortcut key. You can also go up to this top menu for DaVinci Resolve and there's an option for keyboard customization. When I click on this, you can go through and you could modify the shortcut keys to whatever you like. The video is really starting to take shape, but I want to make a few more tweaks. Here's the video of me eating that cookie and then you see the stack of cookies appear. I want to insert a transition between those two clips versus having just a hard cut. To insert a transition, let's go to the top left hand corner and I'm going to toggle off the media pool. I already have all of my video and audio files on the timeline, so I don't need to see this anymore. Next, let's click on the effects library. This opens up the effects library and I see video transitions, audio transitions, I could insert title effects, there's a lot of richness here. Now I want to insert a cross dissolve from me eating the cookie to the stack of cookies. To insert this transition, I'll simply click on it and I can drag and drop it onto the timeline. Next, I'll go back and play to see how this transition looks. Oh, that looks pretty nice. Let's say I wanna make a few edits to the transition. I can double click on the transition and that opens up the inspector on the right hand side. I could click on inspector to hide it or inspector to show it again. Here I'm in the details of the transition and I could set things like the duration, the frames, the alignment. So there are lots of different ways I could customize what this transition looks like. For now, I'm satisfied with the default. I'll leave it as is. Let's say at the very end of my video where we show the company logo, I also want to insert the website. Now I don't have the text on here. How do I get text in? Well, here again, we are going to use the effects library. Just like we dragged a transition in, I can click on titles and here I could pull text into my video. There are all sorts of different types of text I could insert. You have titles, lower thirds. Here I have fusion titles, which have animations. So there's all sorts of things I could insert into my video. I want to keep this simple for now. So I'll use a right lower third, and then I could simply drag and drop that onto another track in my video. I'll position it so it appears right at the end. Here I'll trim it so it ends when the video ends. If I double click on it, this will open up the inspector where I could enter the details of it and I'll type in the website URL. Who would have thought? My URL is the same as the Kevin Cookie Company. Now, along with typing in the text, I could edit all of the attributes of this text. I could change the color, the size, the positioning, the font, whatever I want. For now though, I'm satisfied with the default, so I'll leave that as is. Here now we could play it to see what it looks like. That looks great. I now wanna make one additional tweak to my video. In this clip where I show the cookie, 
and it's disappearing, I want it to zoom in throughout this clip. So how do we do a zoom in? Well, I'll move the playhead to the very beginning of the clip and I'll have this clip selected. Next, let's go to the top right hand corner and click on the inspector. Once again, just like we've seen, the inspector shows all the details of that clip. I have it selected on audio and within the transform section, we can insert keyframes. I'm gonna click on this icon and that'll insert a keyframe. If I go down to the clip below, I can view all of my keyframes by clicking on this icon. A keyframe allows me to define the attributes of the clip at this point in time. At the beginning of the clip, I want it to be at this zoom level. I'll go to the very end of the clip and I'll insert another keyframe right here. And I want the zoom to be a little bit greater, so I'll zoom in just a little bit. Now if we play it, you'll see the zoom effect. If I zoom in a little bit down here, here you'll see these dots which represent each of the keyframes on the timeline. Using keyframes, you could define what the video state looks like at this point in time, and you could define what it looks like at another point in time, and in between, it'll shift from whatever the state is here to what the state is here. We're getting close to wrapping up. One last thing I wanted to show you is how you can change this interface to match your needs. Let's say you want more or less space for the timeline. You can simply hover over and you can drag it so it's smaller or it's larger. Once again, you could close and show these various panes. Let's say you make a whole bunch of changes to the experience and maybe you wanna go back to what it looked like when you first started. Up on the top menu, you can click on workspace and then there's an option to reset the UI layout. Okay, so we're just about done with our commercial and I think it's looking pretty good so far. To render the video, down below, let's click on the option that says Deliver. This opens up the Deliver screen and I usually make my videos for YouTube, so over here on the left-hand side, I could select the YouTube service. Down here, I could select my resolution and I'll go with Ultra HD. I'll go with the highest quality level. You can customize all of the different settings related to the video for the format, I'll also set it to MP4. I could then give it a name, and you could also select a location where you wanna save the file. I'll save it to my desktop. Once I'm all done making my various selections, I can go to the bottom and add it to my render queue. When I click on add to render queue, you'll see it appear as job one. I don't have any other jobs going on. If I wanna kick off the rendering, I'll click on render all. Here now I see that rendering is in progress and it's pulling together my video. I've now finished rendering my video and I see it here on my desktop. Let's click into it to see how it turned out. Well, that's how you can get started editing using DaVinci Resolve 17. Like I said, it's a pretty comprehensive video editor, but it has a lot of nice shortcuts to make your editing even more efficient. Let me know what you think about DaVinci Resolve in the comments down below, and let me know if you now know how to edit videos using it. If you found this video helpful, please give it a thumbs up. To see more videos like this in the future, hit that subscribe button. If you wanna see me cover any other videos on this channel, leave a comment down below. All right. Well, thanks a lot for watching. I hope you enjoyed and I hope to see you next time. Bye.